Hello again. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I am back. We're back here for our Westworld portion of the piano lesson. Okay. So the Westworld lesson, this is also our final lesson for Westworld, everybody. We were working on tempo, right? Tempo management. Um, so there's a, a few things that we had to work on tempo and transitions. All right. So before we get started on Westworld, couple things to talk about okay um, if you can like and share this video every single like and share helps me reach even more students okay so if you don't mind doing that for me really quickly I would really appreciate it okay the next thing is is of course subscribe to my YouTube channel right just search Izzy Chia and you can find me there over the weekend I hit a thousand subscribers so I'm really excited and really happy to bring you even more amazing piano lesson content, right? <laughs> That's what I'm here for, right? I'm a real teacher. I'm not one of those teachers that plays everything perfect, <laughs> right? Okay, so subscribe on YouTube, all right? Um, the third thing is, is uh, join my private Facebook group, right? It's called Encore Music Makers. We make a lot of music in there. We have a lot of fun. Uh, we celebrate um, little wins at the piano, right? Um, you get to submit your lessons and your videos and all kinds of stuff of yourself playing. And you can um, get feedback from me, right? Because that's like what you want is getting my eyes and my ears to your music, right? So that way I can help you learn even better, okay? Um, next, of course, I am on Patreon, right? So Patreon is a very awesome platform that makes giving on a regular basis easy okay for creative people like myself i am on there patreon.com slash izzy chia all you do is choose a tier that works for you okay it's i have tiers from five dollars a month all the way to fifty dollars a month depending on how generous you are feeling so if you want to join as a patron i do have exclusive things that i offer my patrons so go ahead and sign up for a tier if you feel so if you feel like doing so okay Thank you. And that's really about it. Let's get started on our music, right? Enough with this other stuff. <laughs> Go ahead and take out your Westworld music, okay? All right, so. Oh, I had so much fun practicing this song this week. I think I drove my husband crazy. <laughs> but that's okay. All right. So with Westworld, this mainly is just a review of the tricky sections, right? So we had measures... Um, I think it was like the transition between part two and part three that was tricky. And then we also had measure 24, which was a little bit crazy too, all right? So in order for me to sort of figure out where we are, I kind of just want to do a quick run through of the piece, okay? Let's just give ourselves a baseline, okay? I'm not gonna do it too quickly, but I want to give it a little bit of pep, okay? So let's see how that goes. All right, so I am here in piano view and we are in A minor, okay? All right, so A minor. We're starting here at the beginning, all right? I'm gonna count off. One, two, ready?
like some interesting spots in there. And I actually made mistakes at places where I hadn't made them before. I think that's due to the drop of adrenaline that I get whenever I play live on camera, right? It happens to the best of us, right? So um, I have written some key uh, pencil marks to really sort of remind me of those tricky spots where I keep missing notes, right? Um, I mentioned uh, the transition between um, sections or part two and part three, right? That's that measure 17 going into 18. That's one of my tricky transition spots, right? I, I seem to always mess up there. <laughs> and then also at measures 24 into 25, that's still my, uh, you know, the thorn in my foot, or in this case, my finger. <laughs> so I think I'm going to drill a little bit of that measure 17 to 18, the transition between part two and part three, okay? So if you wanna join me, you're, you're free to do so, okay? All right, let's see if we can work this section out. So I know it's a little bit tricky. Starting here with this low B flat. Let's see, I'm gonna play it slowly. Yes, it's like I have so much more success when I do it slowly versus when I speed it up, right? I might be able to play other sections a little bit more quickly, but when the hard part comes, I feel like I just kind of fall apart at those sections, right? So in order for me to really master those hard parts, I have to slow it down and then gradually, incrementally bump up that tempo, okay? So let's try that again, measure 17, to 20, those three or four measures, okay? Let's try that again. All right, starting there. I'm gonna see if I can bump the tempo just a hair, okay? Not a ton, but just enough to give it a little bit more movement. One and a, two and a, ready and a, play and a. <laughs> second party like give myself a one second party here Woohoo! I'm working it out I'm doing good all right now I'm gonna ride that high wave of um, accomplishment that I'm feeling for that one time through now I'm gonna see if I can do it two more times through okay at that same tempo and then we'll bump it up again okay <laughs> let's do it okay starting at 17 let's try this again one and a two and a ready and a play and a <laughs> still just be like a blip in the universe right <laughs> let's make it a habit right let's see if we can actually keep it one more time through and I think I'll feel a little bit better about it okay starting at 17 I'll go 17 to measure 20 all right okay let's see one and a two and a ready and a play and a <laughs> Yeah, okay, so 
right? It's getting better and better. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy, right? Like these habits, these practice habits are um, paying off, right? I did this, this exact same uh, practice during the week when I sat down to practice this song. I did the same thing, measure 17 to 20, and I drilled it and I drilled it and I drilled it. And I did the same thing. It's just when you get those nerves, it kicks in and it messes you up again, right? Same thing over with measures 24 to the end, right? 24 to the end is another really menacing part of the song. That's the climax, right? So um, it might be a good idea to look at that section as well, okay? Let me see if we can play through that one. All right. <sighs> okay, so 24. We're starting with that low B flat with an E, right? Tritones. difficulty that I have is from the transition between 24 and 25. Those two measures. It seems like every single time I always miss the E octave after finishing out measure 24. Okay, that might just be something that is happening with me, but if it's happening with you as well, notice in your drilling habits how you are presenting the music, right? Make sure you write in those note names if you need them, right? Like I drew a giant E <laughs> and I still keep missing it, right? It's, it happens, right? I drew in a giant F for my octave F in my left hand, okay? Now, let me see if I can play through 24 to the end two more times, okay? Two more times. All right. We are here in piano view. I've got my low B flat. I've got my E. Let me count off this time and see if we can play it together. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, go. Do it again, all right? B flat and an E natural. There's that tritone. It's gonna sound ugly, but that's how it goes. Ready? One, two, three, two, two, three. Ready and a play. play along with me go ahead and do so I'm gonna count off one two three two two three three two three four two three to finishing this one, right? Since today is the last lesson for Westworld, instruction-wise, this is about the capacity of what I can teach you for this song. The main things that I want you to remember for Westworld is this, oops, I dropped my pencil, <laughs> is this, we have to be able to emulate the climax in this piece, right? The most menacing and disturbing parts of the 
um, introduction or the cr opening credits to this show happen around our measures uh, 23 to the end, okay? We have to be able to communicate that in the piano, okay? So that means using accents, that means playing fortissimo, that means giving um, each and every note their proper value, right? And being making sure that our sixteenths are crisp and clear, okay? And then, as a surprise ending, make sure that that low A, that octave A at the very end, is held with a fermata, and you can almost hold it until it dies away on its own. It really gives it that drama at the end, okay? I think you can do this, all right? I believe in you. I know that with good practice, you're gonna reach that tempo that's fantastic. I'm gonna keep practicing, right? I get to visit uh, my mom this weekend, so I'm going to see if I can practice enough to get it to where I'm very comfortable and play it on her Steinway this weekend, okay? Just like I did with my Animal Crossing video, I played my Animal Crossing on her Steinway. I will do the same thing for this song, okay? So, if I can get a chance to record a nice video, I will do so, all right? Now, this is the end of this lesson. I'm gonna see if I can play through all of Westworld once more, okay? Especially since we drilled those really tricky spots, okay? Now, Let's see if I can do it successfully, all right? If you wanna play along with me, feel free to do so. Or if you wanna just follow along in your music and listen, that is fine too, all right? I'm glad you're here either way. All right, let's give it a try. All right, so starting at the beginning, all right? I've got a low A and then I come in here on an A. I'm gonna count off. to work on but I'm feeling pretty good um, and that's a pretty um, sort of medium tempo I'm still gonna try and push myself a little bit more to get that tempo up um, but otherwise I'm feeling okay about my song I, I think by this weekend I'll probably have it at the tempo that I want it okay all right I hope you're feeling good you just learned Westworld like how cool is that <laughs> that's pretty awesome so very 
very, very nice job. Nice work on that. Um, thank you so much for joining me for our Westworld piano lesson. I know that you probably have more songs you want to learn, right? And if you don't mind my quirky style, <laughs> uh, drop a line with a, um, a suggestion of a song that you want to learn. I have a pretty big list already growing. People have been commenting and sending me messages from Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook, and they're just like dropping all kinds of cool songs on me. So um, I have a lot of really fun stuff lined up for you guys. So if you want to join in, I'd love to have you. All right. Quick reminder, of course, I am on Patreon. <laughs> you want to sign up for a tier um, between $5 and $50 a month to help support these lessons that I'm bringing to you every week. I would really appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot of fun. We really do. My patrons get some exclusive content, um, polls and Q&As and song requests and all kinds of cool stuff. So um, check me out on there, patreon.com slash Izzy Chia. And of course, the last thing that we always end with is a music quote. <laughs> this is like one of my favorite times um, in lesson because it sort of just grounds us, right? So for today's music quote, I have a lovely quote from the German-born theoretical physicist, Albert Einstein. This is what he says. I often think in music. I live my daydreams in music. That's so, so right. I do too. I do the same thing, just like Albert Einstein. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, when you are um, thinking a lot of times, I don't know, music just sort of puts me at peace and puts me in the right mindset of getting something done, right? It's motivating for me. Sometimes it's very comforting for me, right? When I'm daydreaming, it's kind of the same thing. I, I, it's kind of hard to find time to daydream nowadays, but when I do find that time, a lot of times I find myself referring back to a song or something special that I heard, um, uh, you know, a symphony or something really special, right? I hope you find a lot of joy and a lot of peace in music yourself and a lot of creative expression, right? I think that's another wonderful thing about learning to play the piano is that once you play some different songs and things like that, you really start to want to explore the piano a little bit more, a little bit further than what you normally would have done in the past. It's sort of like you've given yourself permission to be creative, right? Granted, you'd never need permission to be creative, but for ourselves, sometimes we, we can be limiting to ourselves. Um, and, and really the, um, the idea of self-expression as a musician, as a pianist, that's something that's really highly regarded and highly valued in a musician or creative person's life, right? Self-expression is just a really special way to feel good about ourselves as creative people. Anyway, that was a really long explanation. <laughs> I'm just happy that you joined me today for piano. It's been a lot of fun. We've learned Westworld. I mean, that is like one of my favorite, favorite intro um, uh, uh, intros to a show, right? It's just so cool, right? So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you guys in the private group. Drop a comment on, on Facebook, on YouTube. Say hi. Stay tuned, see what kind of cool stuff we have coming, okay? See you later, guys.